what I'd like to do is just go back and do a review of what we talked about as far as exponential functions. All right? Exponential function said y equals b raised to the x. Yes? Yes, what's your question? Oh, you don't have a question. So you wrote it down? So you already wrote that down? Oh. Good, good, good. All right, so let's go back and talk about a review of our exponential functions. A couple things about the exponential function that we talked about was one that it had a y-intercept at 1, 0. And the graph of 0, 1. I don't know why I keep on doing that. Today's been a really bad day. So I have 0, 1, all right? That's going to be my y-intercept. Then I could always pick another point um, on my y-intercept or on my value to be able to uh, figure, um, plot the point. Then the other thing we talked about was the transformations. And this was your homework. We took a look at the graph. And what we did is we transformed it by different transformations. So the transformations of the graph, let's shorten this a little bit, were y equals a times b to the x minus h plus k. Right? Well, remember, if a was negative, that reflected over the x-axis. Um, if we had a negative inside, inside our function, that was going to reflect it about the y-axis. Remember, h shifted the graph left or right in the opposite direction, and k shifts the graph up or down. Yes? OK. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we have um, for our exponential functions. The other thing I wanted you to remind you of is the asymptote is going to be at uh, y equals 0. The domain was from negative infinity to infinity. And the range is from, uh, ranges from 0 to infinity. It's not all real numbers because remember, the asymptote was at y equals 0, so we don't have any negative numbers for the y, right? So now, let's go and talk about a logarithm graph. And we're going to go and talk about this. So a logarithm graph is very similar, log base b of x. So a logarithmic graph looks something like this. And I'm going to let you guys see if you can make some distinctions. All right, so that is what the log, that's what the logarithmic um, graph looks like. So would anybody be willing to maybe give it a shot, raise their hand and kind of say, what are some things that you think that kind of these have in common, that they kind of share something, they look, what is something that's kind of a common trait between those two? Opposite. It's opposite. Reflection. The reflection. What do you mean, a kind of reflection about what or where though? So it's like a little reflection. Okay. Now, would we say this is a reflection over the y-axis? No. Would we say this is a reflection over the x-axis? No. Would we say this is a reflection over the x and the y-axis? Yeah. And when we reflect over the x and the y-axis, well, um, not necessarily actually reflection. I'm sorry. Not a reflection over the x and y axis, but a reflection over the x, y axis, or x equals y axis. My apologies. Not reflecting over the x and y, that'd be reflecting over the origin. But is this a reflection about that line y equals x? Would you guys say that that is correct? The y equals x axis? Yeah. That is a reflection about the y equals x axis. And does anybody know what, hap what we call when we have two? Two graphs that are um, reflected over the x, y. Yeah, it um, starts with n, ends with s. Maybe has a little ver in the middle. Inverses. Inverses. The inverse, a graph and its inverse are a reflection over the y equals x line. All right? So that's how I can came up across this line is by flapping the inverse. All right? So yeah, you can see the characteristics of these. You say, oh, OK, that kind of makes a little sense. 
how each one of these points are going to be inverted, right? So therefore, we know that every point over here, that's x, y. Now, they just get switched. And now the y is the x over there, right? And the x is the y over here, and the y is the x over there, right? You switch them around, OK? Um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the basics of the logarithmic graph. The other thing to know, though, if we want to try transformations of a logarithm, the transformations of the logarithmic graph are going to be as exactly as the transformations for our exponential. So that's why it's so important. If you guys remember, remember I spent that whole time doing, here are all the transformations of a quadratic. Here are all the transformations of a uh, exponential, right? Because you have to know the transformations of these quad, you have to know the transformation of these graphs because whatever you have a transformation here, you can apply the exact same thing. If you have x minus 5, you should know shifts 5 units to the right. If you have plus 1, you know shifts 1 unit up. All right? And all you're doing is you're just transforming those graphs. Put phone on table, face down.